Welcome to the Lost in Transit podcast. I'm your host, Spud Groshon. This week on Lost in Transit, we have Italian travel photographer Sarah Malati. Now, I first heard about Sarah when I was reading an article on who knows where, somewhere on the internet, called Instagram Created a Monster. This article kind of shed light on how people were getting likes and features on Instagram trying to beat the algorithm and how it was such a seedy thing. Since then, I've followed Sarah's journey as a travel photographer. And if you get the chance, head over to head over to BehindTheQuest.com and check out her blog. I'm going to stop my jibber-jabbering and get to the interview. I hope you enjoy this interview with Sarah Malati. All right, welcome to the show, Sarah Malati. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Yeah. So if you could, could you give the listeners a quick history of how you got into traveling? Okay, it's kind of a very long story. Um, I used to be a fashion photographer, and I was living in New York City. And after about three years I was doing that, I realized my work was kind of hurting women because I was contributing in setting very unrealistic standards of beauty that make women feel inadequate. So I kind of had a conscious crisis and I felt like I had to quit, And but I also had to do something about it. And Around the same time, I started watching Anthony Bourdain's show, and that blew my mind, and it mm, opened me up to this new world of mm, his world, the, the way he traveled, and it really impressed me, and I decided to start traveling and doing a project um, where I would go around the world and ask women what beauty meant to them, what they thought made a woman beautiful. So I started traveling for that. The project is called Quest for Beauty. And I started in Morocco and then I went to Vietnam and Hong Kong and doing this project. Uh, while I was doing this project, I started using Instagram to show what I was doing. And I got into the Instagram world and then I kept traveling, doing many, many different things uh, to keep traveling. Okay. Um so before before you were a photographer, had you traveled at all? Um, not uh, a lot. Like I, when I was a kid, my mom brought me to Malaysia and Tunisia, um, but I travel mainly in Europe or in the states. Okay. Uh, but I never travel um, to other continents. All right, all right. Um, and I've I've read some of your blog posts and things like that, and. You seem to be very vocal about social media and Instagram kind of as a whole and how it seems to be toxic in a way. Uh, it's very toxic and um, very destructive. <laughs> yeah. In your travels, have you noticed uh, how Instagram has changed people, the way people travel? A lot, especially in the last year, I think. Um, when I started traveling, uh, I wasn't doing it for Instagram. I was doing it for myself. So I travel very local. I try to spend a lot of time with local people, uh, because, uh, my project required that. And, um, then when I started using Instagram, I started I kept traveling that way, but I also will go to all the photogenic places to take the picture that I, I knew it, it would get a lot of uh, likes on Instagram. And I was kind of the first wave of people that were doing that. And then with us doing that, a lot more people wanted to take the same picture we were taking. So a lot more people started traveling to go take those pictures. The problem is that when you travel that way, um, you you don't go to a country to get to know this country, to learn about um, about the culture and people. You just go because you want to take a fucking picture. And traveling that way doesn't do that good to countries. 
um, besides the, um, there's many sides of, of bad sides of this. The first one is um, the like people. Too many people go to a place that maybe before nobody went to, and uh, as far as the environment goes, it it does real damages. Uh, and then the other side is uh, it kind of damages the the. Um, it denaturalized these places. Uh, an example of that is uh, a recent trip I did to Vietnam a few weeks ago. I went to this um, road that is like a, a neighborhood uh, where a train comes by a few times a day and there's this railroad tracks that goes through the neighborhood. And the first time I went there was like early 2016. And I stumbled uh, across it just um, by coincidence, and it was beautiful. It was like entering to this this place, timeless place, and there were old ladies cooking on the um, railroad tracks, and there were men playing backgammon on their doors, and children running around, and chickens everywhere. It was just beautiful. And I went back uh, this time, and... <laughs> There was none of this left, and it was just like a whole bunch of bars and you know, a lot of people just drinking and sticking selfies on their tracks. So like the place lost completely. The, the nature of the place was gone, and and it kind of broke my heart. <laughs> and I see this happening a lot lately. And then with all this, also the people change because they get all this tourism and all this, I call it ignorant tourism, because when you go somewhere without caring, let's say, about where you are, but you just want to take something from it, like a picture, it's kind of ignorant tourism. And when I'm, the people are, let's say, invaded by this massive wave of, of tourism, they change too, often, especially because often people that travel this way are not very respectful of the people and the culture of the country so they treat sometimes they they treat people bad and in as a consequence the people the local people start being annoyed and and they they act uh, as a consequence of that so i don't know i think uh, this whole social media thing is is not doing very many good things to to the countries we visit yeah i had a i had a little bit of an experience with that in bali uh we'd gone someplace to swim in a waterfall and there had been uh an instagram couple there taking photos but they were very very rude to everybody and were when people were trying to actually have fun and do stuff they bitched and complained because they were in the photo and this and that and that was the first time I think in a really long time or well ever, I guess that I had ever experienced people like that. And I is like the epicenter of this Instagram wave. Um, uh, I was there a few years ago and it was already, there were, uh, this is a very Instagramable place, you know, it's very photogenic. And when you post a picture of Bali on Instagram, it gets a tons of uh, likes. So, a lot of people uh, go there, and I went to a cave um, to with a friend, and we were the only people there. And um, a friend of mine last July sent me a video of this the same exact cave, and there were at least fifty people waiting to take the same picture. Is it this cave with the waterfall in it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I I went there, and there was about that many people there too. It was kind of ridiculous we had we walked down and had no idea what to expect and we basically turned around and left yeah <laughs> that's how i feel now when i go to places like that so because of things like this with social media kind of being toxic and things does that affect the way that you travel uh yeah it's um it, i don't know right now i'm in like the middle of this other conscious crisis and i think soon i will have to quit uh taking this kind of, well, I'm not really taking this kind of pictures anymore, but um, I'm still working within the tourism industry, and I think I'm going, moving away from, from this industry, and I'm trying now to work mainly with uh, NGOs or travel for myself, and that's it, because I just don't see the point of it anymore. It annoys me when 
and I'm not like it's not that I don't want anyone to travel. I just want people to travel consciously and responsibly and and uh, caring about the places they go to. So it's making me want to go to places that are uh, not very um, touristy. Like I, I try to move away as much as I can from places that are too touristy. Where would where would be a place or two that you would want to go? Um, there's uh, less and less places now because mass tourism is uh, is uh, everywhere pretty much. Because it's it's much cheaper now to travel. It's much easier. Even remote locations are more accessible, so there's more and more people going. But like place, last last August I went to Ladakh, which is um, the northern part of India in the state of Kashmir, Jammu, and it's not very practical to go there. So there's not there's a lot of tourism, but not too much. And that was beautiful. And now like I would like to go to Mongolia the never been and i think that would be pretty good as far as not having too many crowds around or some places in africa i would like to go to the congo um or um, uh ghana senegal places that are yeah there's tourism but not too much it's not oversaturated yeah uh i went to i went to mongolia last year nope two years ago and it was incredible I saw like maybe fifteen tourists in two weeks. Oh wow! Yeah, that's... I mean, out, <laughs> outside of Ulaanbaatar, anyway. What did you like it? Oh, it was outstanding. I want to go back tomorrow. <laughs> How are the people? Like, I, I uh, this is another thing I'm thinking about lately. So you know, you see a lot of uh, Nagio like uh, photos from either professional photographers or or mm, want to be professional and you see this uh, people wearing like their traditional clothes uh, but i heard that's on that only happens like a few times a year during specific um, celebrations is that is that true or you saw a lot of people like wearing you know what i'm talking about like mm, the the clothing they they wear that look like a uh, very very old way of dressing but uh or um i think i think it was only a couple times a year i've seen i've seen more video of that in the western part towards the altai mountains um i kind of went toward the north and people were dressed in you know t-shirt and jeans very very just casual mm. but from what i've gathered the out like the people who hunt with the eagles and stuff like that that's kind of more it's kind of maybe a little more commonplace yeah because that yeah, see now i'm writing an article about um how so many photographers distort um reality with these pictures because they they take the like for instance in this case of Mongolia they take the picture of the people dressed all traditional and they make it look like oh this is how they dress this is how it it is uh, or like I don't know the still fishermen in uh, Sri, Sri Lanka or the fishermen in Myanmar uh, you know they're very fake images because most of the time these people are either uh, there to get paid to take the picture or like it's not real culture is something that maybe was there a long time ago and it's not like that anymore but people that take this picture they act like oh this is everyday life this is how they are and it's absolutely not true and that is pissing me off a lot so it's another thing i'm thinking about lately i, I ran into that in myanmar and i was confused as hell <laughs> Because it looked like they were, you know, people were fishing that way. And then the guy came up to the boat and asked for money. And I was like, wait, what? I'm so confused. Yeah, I had the same exact feeling in Sri Lanka. Because, you know, the Steve McCurry picture, uh, he took it, I think, in 1994. And I don't know if back then they were still fishing that way or not. I spoke to a lot of locals. Because when I understand these things, I, I just get so just... I'm confused and, and bitter, so I try to understand what's really going on. And I talked to the locals, and they told me, no, people have, don't really fish that way. They started fishing this way after World War II because boats weren't coming, and it was uh, 
it's very hard to go out and fish. So they invented this new way, but they haven't practiced it in a long time. And when I first went there, I wanted to take the McCary picture, you know, and uh, I just saw a bunch of um, those, uh, how do you call it, stilts uh, in the water, uh, those poles in the water. And I was like, oh, it's my unlucky day and there's no fishermen. And then I went closer to the shore and a group of men was uh, laying on the shore and they saw me and somebody yelled something and they all moved very quick and they ran into the water and jumped on the poles and act like they were fishing. And I was like, what the fuck is happening? And then a man came to me and he was like, oh, it's 350 rupees. Oh, no, sorry, 500 because it's sunset. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, what? I was so confused. And then I realized, oh, my God, it's all fake. It's not real. And it was it was weird as hell. I've, I've read a lot about Steve McCurry and about how a lot of his photos are actually staged. Yeah. And I, 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 he's... For me, he's like one of my favorite photographers ever, but it's kind of heartbreaking to read things like that. Yeah, I know. I love his pictures. Like, they are beautiful. Nothing to say about that. And I heard that too. And uh, I I have many photographers' friends, especially in Italy, that are established photographers and either have known him personally or know a lot about him and they never say nice things. <laughs> and uh lately there's been a lot of scandals with his photoshopping and and all that and uh i don't know he always uh i think in the past he will define himself as a photojournalist which is not the case uh he's definitely an amazing portrait photographer so uh, i have no doubt about that, uh, no doubt about that but i think uh a lot of his pictures were staged like that's not a uh, captured image it's just something that he created yeah which is okay i mean if you, you just have to say uh hey this is not real <laughs> that would be the solution <laughs> all the it, time it would make it a lot easier right um okay so enough about social media and photography and fun things like that um have you ever been stranded anywhere? What do you mean by stranded? Stuck. Can't get out. Uh... Yes. <laughs> in uh, Bali, I lost my passport <laughs> like an idiot. <laughs> and I lost it the first day I got there. And I called the Italian embassy. And I asked them what I had to do. And they said, oh, you just have to fill up uh, an online form. And uh, when um, cause the visa is like 30 days. So before your visa expires, you have to come to, to Jakarta and uh, it takes one day to get your passport, your new passport. So it was, oh, okay, I fill out the form and I spent like a month in Bali. And then before the visa was up, I went to Jakarta. They let me let me fly just with a, a picture of my old passport. <laughs> and I arrived to Jakarta and I got to the embassy and I was like, I'm here to get my passport. And they were like, oh, miss, but you have to... Uh, fill up the form online and I was like yeah I did and they were like no you didn't and I was like yes I did and um, so I made them check their emails with uh, putting typing in my email and they saw an email from me with the uh, fill form and they just look at me and they were like oops we missed it so I got stuck in Jakarta for like two weeks before they got, got me my passport and I couldn't leave and um, I don't know, very incompetent embassy <laughs> very, very incompetent embassy it happens a lot with Italians I feel like that happens with the embassies in general though, I've never heard a good story about somebody dealing with their home country's embassy yeah. <laughs> but Italy particularly, they're not known for good, good bureaucracy or um, well, they're known for laziness. <laughs> so <laughs> that way. Love it. I love it. Um, okay, so when when you travel, you tend to get out of the cities, right? And go kind of to the remote areas? Not always. Like, Not uh, always? I, I do like cities, too. Um, but I like to leave them like a local. 
Like I like local life anywhere. So I can enjoy a city. Like I love Paris uh, and I have a lot of Parisian friends. So I, when I'm there, I live it like a local and it's a different Paris than the Paris I saw when I went there as a tourist. Uh, but I do like remote, uh, remote areas just because it's a different kind of life they live there. Um, especially in developing countries. I often work with NGOs and uh, we go and visit villages in the middle of nowhere. And the reality there is completely different from anything you'll ever see anywhere else. So I like both. Okay. Uh, that, I guess that kind of answers my question. I was going to ask, how do you tend to get to remote areas where you stay and photograph? Yeah, mainly when I work with NGOs. But even before I started working with NGOs, I always try to either get to know a local and, and ask them, hey, like, is there something different around here? Can you bring me to your village? Like, I, it happened, I don't remember, uh, in Ethiopia maybe, that I, I met a guy and he brought me to his, oh, in Morocco. Um, and I met a guy that was managing the Riyadh I was staying in. And, uh, he we became friends and a few days later he brought me to his village uh in the middle of the mountains and it was the first time actually i saw a, a village in so remote and it was amazing and well from when i saw that i was like i never want to do without this like i always want to travel this way and see these things i tend to try and get out of the cities when i can but i being that I don't know anybody or that I don't speak the local language, I tend to have trouble. Mm. So is that is that your best kind of advice is try and meet a local and see if they can yeah, kind be, of take you out? First advice is be nice. Just really be nice to people and people will be so nice to you. It's incredible how far smiles and, and just kindness can go. I met so many people just by starting a conversation and, and being kind. Okay. And then, so I tend to have, I tend to have a problem with taking photos of people when I travel. How do you go about that? How do you ask for permission to take photos uh, of someone? I, I'm a portrait photographer, so it's kind of my job. And uh, it's just try, just ask, uh, smile. That's, seriously, smiles go such a long way <laughs> uh, when you don't speak the same language, especially. Uh, I just, every time somebody strikes my attention or I feel like, oh, I really want to take this picture, I just go and ask very politely. If I can't speak the same language, I just use my hands a lot and I point at the camera and I point at the person and I smile. <laughs> and uh, I think 95% of the time people say yes. Okay. Very awesome. Um, so I was reading on your website, or I think I read on your website, you wrote a book? I'm writing a book. You're writing a book. Yeah. It's been a long <laughs> process, and it will be a little longer, but I hope to finish it soon, because it's, uh, it's uh, sucking the life out of me. <laughs> <That's pretty laughs> is, it, uh, is it a memoir? Is it about travel? What is it? Yeah, it's, it's a memoir. It's um, it's the last 10 years of my life from when I left Italy to go to America, chasing my dream of being a dancer because I was a professional dancer before. And okay. then and, um, it talks about all my travels and then it talks about where I'm now in this new phase of my life. And there's a lot of... Uh, I had a very intense and crazy life. I went through a lot of shit, and uh, um, now I'm kind of calming down, <laughs> I'd say. But uh, it talks about travel and art and sex and drugs, and it's it's a mixture of uh, everything. And it's called. I hope it will be called because I don't know if uh, if I publish it with um, publishing house. I don't know if they will let me keep the title, but I hope to call it "Fuck You." I'm an artist. <laughs> <laughs> That's very cool. Um, okay, so winding down, 
if you have any travel advice for the listeners, if you could give that to them. Um, travel, uh, okay, I always say this lately, travel to get marks on your heart and not just to get likes on your Instagram pictures. Um, I always say that the difference between a tourist and a traveler is that the tourist goes to a country bringing his world with him, um, not necessarily open to what's coming and expecting to find the same comfort often that he has in his own country, while a traveler is somebody that leaves his world behind and goes to a new country, open-armed, open-hearted, and is ready to embrace whatever it comes. So I, I really like to see more people traveling that way and being curious really to know a country, to know the people and interact with the people. And cause a country is nothing without its people. And I think the, that's what makes it special. That's what makes it unique. So people, 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 people. And I would say go to the market because I think markets are an incredible part of any country. You see, um, you see, a lot there like you you kind of can understand more what the soul of the country is just by looking at what they're selling uh how it looks and and that's what will go on your plate and food is such an important part of any country it tells a lot about about its history and i don't know go to the market <laughs> uh, the market's definitely one of my favorite places to be in a new country yeah Awesome. And then could you tell the listeners where they can follow along on your journey and find your photos? Yes. So I have a million websites and social media accounts. Um, my Instagram is Sarah Melody, um underscore. Uh, I have a blog that is called Behind the Quest. So it's www.behindthequest.com. My photography website with my portfolio and my professional work is saramalati.com. My project, <laughs> Quest for Beauty, is questsforbeauty.co. Then I have a YouTube channel, um, youtube.com uh, slash saramalati1. And facebook.com uh, uh, slash uh, saramalati photography. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that is a lot of websites. I know. I love it. But it's good to have that much stuff out. Yeah, sometimes it gets a little ADD sometimes, but it's okay. Sure. Um, well, thank you, Sarah, for being on the show. Thank you. Thank you. It was so a pleasure. Much. My pleasure. So what did you think? That was my interview with Sarah Malotti. Now, I will link all of Sarah's websites and social media in the show notes i will also link all of our social media in the show notes but if you're listening and you don't feel like going to the show notes you can check us out on social media instagram is lost in transit podcast twitter and facebook it's lost in transit pc and if you have any questions comments concerns or complaints feel free to email me lost in transit pc at gmail.com also if you find it in your heart to review the podcast anywhere you're listening to this, it would be greatly appreciated. Again, I'd like to thank you all for listening. And until next week, get lost. Get lost.